Hey guys, even here, and in this video we have a couple of very interesting topics, we gotta start though with the most relevant topic, uh, Toronto Pro, and this physique update of potentially the winner of this show, probably the favorite to win this show, Hassan Mustafa, who just looks nutty right now, who looks freaky as hell, man. I mean, look at him, look at his, look at his most muscular right here, uh, look at that density in that chest, and, and the size, and, and the thickness of those arms, not to even mention his quads, his legs. Like, this guy, he's not the tallest guy, he doesn't have the biggest frame, but the amount of muscle that he's packing on his small frame is just incredible, like, so much dense muscle. But the question is really, is he truly the favorite to win this show? Or are people just hyping him up because of his name, because of his freak factor status, or whatever else? Because, yeah, like, in this photo, he does look very freaky. In this one, probably even more so, like the size of those freaking arms and the density to the chest and shoulders and the legs as well, like, he's got a ton of muscle. But this is his current physique update, as far as we know, based on what he's telling us, and we are only a few days away from Toronto Pro. So even though he is super massive, super muscular, super dense and thick, is he conditioned enough to win this show? I don't know, I honestly doubt it. Now here in the side chest you can kind of see his glutes, which are, absolutely are, his trouble area. In the side poses and in this front pose you can't really see the problem that he might be having. Like from the front he's always relatively decently lean. I mean he obviously isn't super diced right now, but you can't see his trouble area, which is his glutes, his hams and his lower back. Now, if you compare this most muscular to what he looked like back when he did Indie Pro, I think it was his first pro show back when his conditioning was an actual problem, you can see some similarities in conditioning. Even back then, he had this crazy fullness, crazy density, a ton of muscle he was packing back in the day, but the conditioning was issue, and here you can see what he looked like, I think this was 2020, 2021, a Chicago Pro, where he still didn't figure out his conditioning. And uh, with these glutes, with soggy glutes like this, with basically zero separation in your hamstrings and with watery lower back, you cannot win pro shows. Neither did he win a pro show that year. He won a pro show, actually two pro shows last year, when his conditioning was finally in check. He won Orlando Pro, and Puerto Rico Pro, and he was prepped by AJ Sims, the cement factory guy, and he really got him shredded, like, it was the first and the only time when Hassan Mustafa brought conditioning to the stage, and once again, with all the density, all the thickness, all the roundness, all the muscle that he's packing on his frame, just being decently conditioned, having glutes actually in, you know, not being completely off, with your glutes and your hamstrings, if he does that, if his glutes are conditioned enough, he wins these shows, man, like, he's that good. The only question is, is he gonna be conditioned like this? Freaky, massive, round, full, blasting full, super thick, but the conditioning is what he is missing, what he was missing, and he didn't, he wasn't able to win pro shows like this. Now, is he gonna bring good conditioning at, uh, at this year's Toronto Pro? Well, based on what he's looking like right now, I don't think so. I could be totally wrong, he might be doing some crazy drying out protocol and right now, at this part of the week, he looks the worst he's gonna look. And he posted this intentionally to confuse the other competitors, for them to relax and to think he's out of shape. Maybe that's that, but I doubt it, honestly. I think he's just gonna be off. I think he's not shredded enough. And even though he's super impressive, super freaky, he cannot win a show if he has soggy glutes like he used to have before. You know who's not gonna have soggy glutes? Ian Valier. <laughs> that guy is always dry as hell, always super conditioned, always shredded, and he's doing this show. As far as the other more notable names in this show, you have obviously Mohamed Shaban, you have Jason Love in the bottom left, you have uh, Brent Swanson in the bottom right corner, 
And there's also Nate Spear in the top right corner. I like this guy, I like his physique. I think he has the tools to become one of the top pros. Maybe this year, maybe next year, maybe in a few years, I don't know. But he has all the tools, really. And he has the mindset. I listened to him on a podcast, him and his coach, Andrew Berry. And I love the way these guys approach this thing, the way they approach bodybuilding. So with time, if everything goes well for them, and when the judges actually notice Nate Spear, I believe he has the tools to become one of the top guys. However, this year, at this Toronto Pro, I have Ian Wallier as my favorite to win this show. You could argue that Hassan maybe has more potential because he won those two shows recently and Ian kind of slipped, but really Ian was seventh at the Olympia and last year the lineup was much deeper. Also, he wasn't at his absolute best, not by any stretch. And now he's doing something new, something different. He's back with his old coach, Matt Jensen, who is probably second best coach in the world right now, right after uh, Hani Rambut, in my opinion, at least. And I mean, the way Ian is speaking, I listened to him on a podcast. He was talking about how, how he's seeing certain changes in his physique that he never saw before and why those changes occurred. Well, it's because of a difference in approach of his former coach Patrick Tour and his new current coach Matt Jensen. The difference are mainly in protein consumption. Uh, Ian is eating like 30-40% more protein now than he did back uh, with when he was working with Patrick uh, Tour. And also he's doing more cardio, he's going very low with carbs, he's doing it old school basically now. And he's saying he's seeing certain changes, certain details in his physique that he never really saw before. Is that really the case? We're going to find out soon enough on that stage. But based on what I'm seeing from him, he didn't really post any really transparent updates. All he's showing us are little snippets. For example, this mirror selfie and a couple of shots of his legs and an arm. I'm going to show them to you in a moment. Uh, here you can see like, yeah, like this is his usual conditioning he always posts stuff like this nothing crazy he also posted this photo of his legs but yeah as you can see in this one he looks like his usual self his self is always look like this basically and as far as the legs like there is nothing new here i don't know why the hell is new i mean his usual legs like his legs look like they usually do like they are lean they are big they are full they are good but i'm not seeing any difference really I think Ian gets overly excited sometimes and he hypes himself up a little bit too much, more than necessary, and I think that's what's going on right now. I don't think he's gonna be much different than he was in the past years, but what I do believe is that Matt Jansen is gonna pick him just right, because he always does that, like that's his thing, he picks his athletes perfectly pretty much every time, so if Ian finally picks perfectly, and I don't think we ever saw Ian at a perfect peak maybe once or twice here and there but like mainly he's always i think at like 80 90 percent if he peaks if he comes in at 100 percent like that's gonna be something serious and i think he should save that for the olympia i don't know he can probably peak two times like now for toronto and for the olympia as well uh, and uh, this is gonna be a good practice for him to try new protocol and to actually for matt to actually to learn his body to know how to pick him perfectly for the olympia but as far as Toronto Pro, I think it's gonna be a relatively easy win for Ian, even though I don't know if he actually changed his body too much for him to be like, I don't know, to jump, to leap forward at the Olympia stage, to go from that 7th or that 10th place for that matter uh, to like top, I don't know, top 7 again or top 6, something like that. I don't see those changes right now, maybe till the Olympia something is gonna change. I don't know if he made those kind of changes, I don't really see it in his physique updates, but we haven't really seen any proper physique updates. We're gonna see his physique on stage in a couple of days, and then I can make my conclusion. Next up, we have a very freaky update of Samson Dauda. How the hell does this guy manage to keep growing, not just year after year, but like competitive season after competitive season? Like, we see him twice in a year at shows, and every time he looks like a completely different bodybuilder, like a newbie, progressing like crazy. Why is that? Why is that happening? Well, I got an answer, actually. 
it's in supplements that he is taking it's in creatine you know what i mean not an actual creatine but if you guys want an actual creatine old school labs has a great one it's very well micronized it also has an added probiotic in it so it's gonna help your digestion and if you guys use a code even you get a 15 percent discount so it's not very expensive either but again it's very well micronized it's a very high quality creatine not just creatine all the supplements by the old school apps are super high quality like the best quality on the market right now i'm telling you guys the link is down below and once again if you want to support me if you want to keep me push all this awesome content for you guys this is the way to support me buy old school apps creatine for example and use the code even thank you guys samson dauda why is he growing this rapidly for the past couple of years is it because he's working with milo sharchev now it probably has something to do with that as well i believe milos is probably third best coach in the world right now right after honey uh, rambert and matt jensen there comes milos sharchev and he is potentially making your new mr olympia samson dauda currently Ever since Samson started working with Milos, he flourished. Basically, you can say Milos created Samson Dauda. You can say that. Um, is the reason why Samson is making all this progress, you know, Milos and his crazy insulin protocols, I believe that has a lot to do with, uh, with Samson's rapid growth because some guys, some bodybuilders really respond well to that stuff, especially the ones with super fast metabolism. And I believe Samson has one, and he has a ton of muscle on his big frame. Um, he's actually not six foot one or whatever you guys might think. He's actually five foot eleven, and right now he's three hundred and twenty pounds at five foot eleven, which is humongous. And I'm expecting him to get like probably up to three fifty in this off season before his Olympia prep starts. How he's gonna accomplish that? Once again, Milos's crazy protocols are definitely a big part of it but based on what Fuad Abiyad the guy that is sponsoring Samson said in his podcast basically Samson has been using baby doses he was pretty much natural until recently check this out you know what he reminds me of and the story it's not Samson Samson doesn't remind me of Ronnie Coleman but the story reminds me of the Ronnie Coleman story because everybody knew Ronnie was natural not that Samson was natural, but everybody knew Ronnie was natural. And as soon as he started like playing with, he turned into Ronnie Coleman. Mm -hmm. And Samson wasn't natural, but if you ask him about what he was using, he might as well have been. Yeah. And it seems like now that he's kind of toying with a few things, he's like just every fucking few months he just gets, he changes. Pepper is butter. So basically what Fuad is saying is, no, it's not that Samson was natural until recently, but that he wasn't using a lot of stuff. And now that he started using more and a little bit more and a little bit more and adding new things that he never used before, you heard what Milos was saying, uh, that Samson never before used the, the harshest, the, the strongest compound of them all. And that he used it for the Arnold when he won that show. And he probably used very small doses. So if he uh, if he increases those doses for the Olympia, as I'm sure he will, and obviously that is the reason why he's making all this progress uh, based on what Ford is saying. He has been adding more and more a little bit every, every few months. And that's why he has been progressing this fast. Finally, we got an answer. It's not just insulin protocols. It's not just Milos's coaching. It's not that, I don't know, for whatever reason, he's a late bloomer. It is the fact that he was almost natural before. I don't know what that means. I'm really curious to hear exactly what he was doing. I would love to know that. I don't think I ever will. I don't know if Samson is going to speak about his doses. I hope so, genuinely, on Fuad's podcast. Uh, but we'll see. If he does, I'm going to make a video about it for sure, man. That, that would be a topic I would love to listen about. But as for now, we know the fact that he hasn't really been pushing it before. And now that he's actually pushing it, he's making all this progress. And in this most recent photo, I know for a fact that he has been on for a little over a couple of weeks, maybe. So he has been off since the Arnold. And a couple of weeks ago, he started his cycle. Considering all that, he looks freaky, man. He looks super freaky at 320 pounds. His stomach, though, is protruding a little bit too much, more than I would like to see. 
but I'm guessing he's just, uh, you know, eating too much food right now. He did have a little tiny bit of distension at the Arnold Classic, which I'm sure is from a crazy heavy car blow that Milos gave him, but I hope it's gonna be fixed until the Olympia. At the Olympia, they're gonna condemn that. They're not gonna let him win the Olympia with a bubble gut. He's not gonna have a bubble gut. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that. But when you're adding all that size everywhere, a little bit needs to go to your midsection. Hopefully not too much. What he has right now is good, it's fine. If he doesn't keep getting worse, he's good. He has a good midsection, he has a very small waistline. Uh, he overall has beautiful lines, man. Such an aesthetic physique for a mass monster. And that is basically the reason why I believe he's gonna become the next Mr. Olympia. He's gonna win the Olympia this year. Whatever you guys think though, tell me down below in the comment section, make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel and check the old school labs, the link is down below, use code EVAN for 15% discount. Thank you so much guys for watching, all the best and bye bye.